Hello, I'm Dan Alford. Welcome to the ARC Specialties Weld of the Week. Today we talk about electroslag welding, specifically strip electroslag. Let's go back and talk about subarc first. With submerged arc welding, you don't need a gas. We're running a blanket of flux over the part. This means it only works in the flat position because we have to have the flux remain on the surface. With electric slag, it's a variation on subarc. Instead of an arc underneath this blanket of flux, instead we have the arc directly through the molten flux pool. So after the arc is initiated, then we no longer have an arc. It's all through the liquid. And the advantage of this is reduced dilution. You only have to add flux to one side of the strip, whereas on subarc you'd have to add it to both sides. And the deposition rates are just tremendous. For example, we're going to show you a couple of different styles today. 60 millimeter strip and 30 millimeter. 60 millimeter is the most productive. We're running about 27 kilowatt hours to put down 63 pounds of metal per hour. So if you divide that out, that's around 0.4 kilowatts per pound deposited. Whereas if you go and look at gas metal arc welding, for example, uh, with an 045 wire running at 200 inches a minute, you're putting down around 6 pounds an hour, one-tenth as much material. And yet you're using 800 watts per, or 0.8 kilowatts per pound. So that's twice as much heat energy. And so what does that mean? Well, it saves energy and it also means reduced dilution. So if we're trying to do an overlay, and that's typically what you're trying to achieve with strip, is put a dissimilar material on the surface of a part, either for corrosion or wear resistance, you're trying to minimize the base metal dilution. Electro slag, you can hit dilutions of well under 10%, something you can't do with submerged arc welding. And why are we using a strip rather than a wire? It's because we're looking for large, flat, beads. We're trying to cover a lot of square feet. So the deposition rate is great up at 60 pounds an hour, but more, more importantly than that, what we're doing is we're hitting nice wide wells. Each well bead with a 60 millimeter strip is two inches in width. On today's video, we're making wells with stainless steel and ink canal. You can see that we optimized our welding parameters so the slag actually peels off the part and reveals a beautiful weld underneath absolutely no oxides. There's two reasons for this. Submerged arc and electroslag both shield the well puddle extremely well from the atmosphere, which prevents oxidation, but there's also deoxidizers present in the flux itself. On the cross sections, you'll see a very flat bond line. This indicates we have minimal dilution, so we haven't compromised the overlay chemistry in the least. So let's leave the lab and go see a couple of real-world applications. The first one is pipe cladding. We're cladding not only the OD of the pipe, but the ID also. Strip is perfect for this. There's a lot of square feet to be clad, and with the width of the strip, we can do a lot of work in a short period of time. It was a bit of a challenge to feed the strip down the boom on this welding system. We did it by spiraling the strip around the arm through a series of flat rollers, and it worked pretty well. You can see here on the video, we're running a water-cooled head to keep it cool. Subarc and electroslag are both older processes, but we found that if you add advanced motion control, you can tackle jobs which were impossible in the past. You can see from the stepovers on some of these videos the precision that you can obtain with servo motion control. This last example is of an additive manufacturing or 3D printing process. Typically, this is either done with lasers or gas metal arc welding with small wires. The advantage of electroslag welding is our deposition rate. We're up at over 30 pounds an hour. What we're building here is a 16-inch diameter pressure vessel with a 1-inch wall. We're capitalizing on the bead shape that you get with strip cladding. It's a 30 millimeter wide bead, and if we stack them on top of each other, we can slowly produce a vessel of any dimensions that the customer may possibly need. We look forward to posting new episodes of the ARC Specialties Weld of the Week. If you're one of the thousands of operators of ARC Specialties equipment around the world and you have a weld that you would like to showcase, please contact us. At ARC Specialties, we thrive on problems. Send us yours.